In session 14 of a seminar on the logic of fantasy, the psychoanalyst Jacques Lacan uses the slide rule as an analogy to connect ideas he has developed earlier but brought together in a critical way in this session. It is as if Lacan picked out his toughest ideas and pressed them into a single gizmo. But since no one uses slide rules anymore, these may take a little unpacking. I had to leave out a lot here, but the main idea is that Lacan's slide rule not only goes back and forth, but deep into space. At the same time, he defines a different kind of space, a different kind of depth, one that will connect our Euclidean idea of perspective with a more archaic and otherworldly kind. What is a slide rule, anyway? Anyone born after, say, 1960 is unlikely to ever have seen one. Before small electronic calculators could easily do math and trig functions, the slide rule served engineers and architects by allowing them to do sophisticated operations. The results weren't precise, but knowing the ballpark figure was valuable when algebra, square roots, and trigonometry were involved. The slide rule is versatile because it combines logarithmic scales with even metric scales. Slide rules actually reverse the metric with the logarithmic. They stretch the arithmetic scales into a log form while they put the log numbers on an evenly spaced line. Lacan's slide rule is more perverse. Its cursor changes the value of odd and even as it moves. The result of this shifting two things at the same time makes Lacan's slide rule a flip switch between the left and right sides of space. The name for dividing space this way is stereognosis, and it indicates that we are facing into a space where parallel lines will converge on a vanishing point. Lacan says that when we look out into space, we look orthographically, because each point on our screen is evenly spaced. It's like we are looking at the end of each visual ray head-on, out to a vanishing point. And because the vectors are evenly spaced, they create a perspectival foreshortening effect, where the size of things diminish logarithmically as they are further away. But this is no ordinary perspective space. Because our sight lines are parallel, we are staring out at a different kind of vanishing point. Here I'm thinking of the twin gods Castor and Pollux, who were able to share immortality by taking turns in Hades. This is a bit like the odd and even oscillation Lacan prescribes for the values of the Auge Petita. It relates more to our actual visual field because it acknowledges that the 180 degrees of frontal vision presumes 180 degrees of invisibility behind it. And this correlates this backside to the hidden side of objects that face us when we look at them. All in all, Lacan has three modes of representing the small a the indefinable loss or lack that keeps desire alive. It's pure loss, the loss of something we never actually had. But Lacan says that it has a distinctive form and dynamics, and his slide rule explains part of it by relating it to the Fibonacci number series. Because Lacan starts with the unit 1 as the big other, and defines little a in relation to that, the value of little a to increasing powers diminishes rather than increases. This allows it to be both outside and inside the original unit large a. Imagine that we are looking through the slide rule scale with parallel lines, in the same way we stare at a stereogram pattern 
that looks uniform if we look at it directly. But if we stare out into space, suddenly a 3D image pops into view. In the case of the stereogram, we have a different kind of surface, one that is capable of revealing a thickness even though we know it to be completely flat. The 3D effect is due entirely to our brain's desire to maintain homeostasis, balance. The slight difference in the pattern is a stimulus that must be resolved, and the brain's best solution is to create a 3D form. This act involves a remote vanishing point that we create with our eyes parallax, but it creates a mark in front of us locally that penetrates the thickness, which we can label as the catagraphic mark, or deep cut. Just as we create a perspective in front of us that implies an equal and opposite space behind us, the catagraphic mark implies that we are surrounded by a virtuality implied by our orthographic stare. This cartoon captures the idea perfectly, but it adds the interesting idea that the invisibility of what is behind us, what surrounds us, can be rotated around in front to be something that some see and others don't. This is the essence of anamorphosis, and I'd like to suggest here that this model could be generalized to cover all cases of anamorphosis, including cats seeing ghosts.